friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a card featuring the adorable new Honey Bear stamp set from Reverse Confetti, as well as the Fun Times 6x6 pattern paper pad. I've stamped my images out on some Copic friendly cardstock with Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers today. Beginning with my bear, I'm using E23, E25, and E27. I'll bring in that E29 later, but I'm starting with that E27 and just laying in my shadows all around the outside edge of his body, and then also a little bit around his snout just to make that look like it's protruding out a little bit. Then I'll come in with that E25 and I'm going to blend right over the edge of that E27 and carry that color out a bit. The E27 is pretty dark so I want to make sure that I blend away any harsh lines. Then I'm going to come in with the E23 as my lightest shade and I'm going to fill in the rest of the main part of his body. So just being careful again to scrub over the edge of that E25 to make sure I have a really nice transition and no harsh lines left behind. Next I'll use the E29 to color in most of the little bear's nose and I'll blend that out with the E27. I'm also going to use that E29 as the darkest shade on my tree trunk so I'll give a shadow up the right hand side and then I'm going to blend towards the center with the E27 and finish that off with the E25. I'll bring in the E21 to use with the E23 and E25 to color the bear's belly and his snout. I'm using the E25 as the darkest shadow and then blending up with the E23 and then I'll finish with the E21. There is quite a bit of difference between the E21 and the E23, so I did have to work at that to get that to blend. I brought in a little bit more of the E23 just to help that transition and then blended once again with the E21. I'm also going to use those same three shades to color in the Apple Basket. I like to use the same color families in different areas across the card when I can. I just think it makes it feel a little more cohesive. Next I'll be bringing in R20, R22, and R24. And I'm going to use the R20 to color in the bear's ears and give him some rosy cheeks. And then I'm also going to do a quick layer on all of my apples just to help them blend a little bit more easily and just to have some color laid down there. I wanted to put a bite mark in one of the apples so I'm just taking a memento dual tip marker and drawing that in. That's the same ink that I stamped the images with so it's going to be a perfect match. Then I'm going to come in with that R24 and begin to lay in my shadows on all the apples. I'm just doing it on the right side of the apple to keep it nice and easy. I think this stamp set is so adorable and really versatile, especially since they give you such a nice variety of sentiments. There's everything in this set from friendship to love to just basic hello and even teacher. So this is a really great one to pick up, especially if you're on a budget and you need a stamp set that has a lot of bang for your buck. This one could go in so many different ways. But back to the coloring, I'm blending out the centers of my apples with that R22 and then I also added a little bit more of that to the rosy cheeks of my bear just to help them stand out a little bit more. The R20 was getting lost on his dark brown fur. And then I'm going to bring that R20 in on the left side of all of my apples so they have a nice highlight. Coloring them all the same like this makes it go super quick. I used YR00 to add a little bit of color to the inside of my apple. And then I'll use BG11 to accent my clouds and help them look extra soft and poofy. Then I'll grab my colorless blender and just go over the edge of that BG11 and fade that into white. I'll use the YG05 to color in all the teeny tiny leaves on the apples. They're super small so just a dot of color will do it. 
And then I'm going to add just a smidge of color to some of my apples with that YG05 as well. A lot of times red apples do have a little bit of green left on them, so I thought that would help them just to look a little more natural and a little bit more interesting. Then I'll bring in my R20 and color right over those green spots just to help it fade a little bit and become more a part of all the apples. And now I can trim these out with the matching dies. So if you're ever feeling stuck and having a hard time coming up with a new card design, a card sketch is a great resource for you to use. This one here is from Reverse Confetti. And a sketch is meant to be a jumping off point for your inspiration, so you can flip it and change it, alter it to suit your needs. Today I'm going to be flipping this one on its side, and I'm going to be using some different dies from Reverse Confetti. I'm using the Lacy Scallop Circle and the Grassy Border from the Nuts About You stamp set. I've die cut the Lacy Scallop Circle out of some cheap white cardstock and then also out of pattern paper and that's just to give that pattern paper a little bit more stability so that I can later pop it up on my card and it'll hold up. I'm adding the blueprint for my sky so I'll just line that up with all the little cuts and uh, edges on that border and then I'll use the green part down below as my grass. So on the right edge you can see that there are two stripes, one is brown and one is green, and I'm going to use my tree to represent those. So I have the brown trunk that is extending down, and then I have the green foliage at the top, which is representing that green stripe that's just sticking out at the top portion of the circle. And I just stamped that leaf image on some light green cardstock so that I would have that green background behind it and not have to color it in. The next thing I want to represent on my card sketch is that little trio of dots at the bottom, and for that I'm going to use the pile of apples. I'll just add some liquid glue to the back of that, and then I can adhere them in the same position. And now I'll just hold those up side by side so you can see that's a pretty good representation. Like I said, a card sketch is just supposed to be a jumping off point for your inspiration. I'll add a dot of glue to the spaces between the leaves on my tree and then I can lay an apple right over top of that. Makes it nice and easy to adhere those. And I'm just making sure to stagger their position just a tiny bit so that they look a little bit more natural on the tree. And I'll set an acrylic block on top of that to help them dry flat. Once those are dry, I can add the rest of my images. And I'm going to begin with my bear. Since he's kind of the focal image, I want to center everything else around him. I'm going to add a dot of glue to his little paw, and then I can give him the apple with the bite taken out of it. I'll put the basket with the apples in between him and the pile of apples, so it looks like he's been gathering. And then I'm going to put the two little clouds up in the sky. So I'll do the larger one up towards the center, and then the smaller one off towards the left. And I'll just set my acrylic block back in place until those dry. In the meantime, I'm going to work on my sentiment. I'm using some black pearl card stock, and I'm stamping with Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink that works great with embossing powder. I'm going to stamp that twice to get a really good impression, and then I'm going to dip that in some white embossing powder. I'll flip that over and tap off the excess, and then I can heat set that with my heat tool until it's nice and melted. While I have my Misty out, I'm going to stamp the inside of my card. I'm using Lawn Fawn's Bubblegum Ink to stamp out the little bee and the honey pot and an additional sentiment that says, I couldn't have picked a sweeter friend. So sweet. The rest of the card sketch is just a solid rectangle, so I chose one sheet of pattern paper for that. I chose this kind of blue indigo print with the circles. I thought that would really pop with the pinks and greens that are on the rest of our card. I've added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel so I can peel off those release papers and then I will line that up on the front of the card to see where I want it. I'm going to do it a little bit high of center and press that down into place. 
Then I'll grab my sentiment strip and just see where I want that to go on the card. I decided it was a little bit long, so I'm going to trim off either end. And then I will cut those into a fishtail banner just by cutting up from the center and then from the edges to meet that line. And I'll do that for both sides. I'll add some liquid glue to the back and then line that up on my card right where I want it and press it down into place. As a final embellishment, I'm going to take my Spectrum Noir clear glitter pen and add a little bit of shine to each of the apples. This is just subtle, but it really looks pretty when it catches the light. It has a nice sparkle to it. And that is going to complete our card for today. I'll lift that up to the light and try to catch that shimmer so that you can see it. And I'll give you another peek at the inside of the card. Reverse Confetti's monthly sketch is called A Sketch For You To Try, and I will have a link in the description down below if you're interested in participating. You can enter as many times as you want, and the prize is a $20 gift certificate to the Reverse Confetti store, so super cool. Be sure to check out the link for all the details on how to enter. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Here's two extra videos I thought you might also be interested in, so hopefully those will tide you over until my next one. Until then, I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.